Patients with cloacal extrophy are born with an omphalocele, two hemibladders, and a prolapsed bowel in between both hemibladders that it's usually the terminal ileum. At the International Center for Colorectal and Neurogenital Care at Children's Hospital Colorado, we believe it's important that these patients receive a unified management plan since day one of life. We all scrub as a team, and my job as the colorectal surgeon, together with the urologist, is to separate all the gastrointestinal tract from the urinary tract, incorporating every piece of bowel into the gastrointestinal tract, making a true end colostomy. As the bladder and the extra feed intestine are closely attached, it's very important that we identify the ureters early in the procedure. Once separation of the gastrointestinal extra feed tract has occurred, the bladder can be closed. Firstly, we close the posterior or back wall of the bladder. And if the anatomy is appropriate, it's possible to close the bladder completely and place it back within the abdominal cavity. If, as is the majority of the case, the abdomen is too tight, then we um, place the bladder on the anterior abdominal wall as an extra feed bladder, and then aim to repair it in approximately three months. If we have bladder extra feed placed, then we protect the mucosa with either wet rate eggs or with a saran wrap, which is placed over the mucosa. When the patient is female, I, as the pediatric and adolescent gynecologist, join the surgery to inspect and identify the reproductive structures. When possible, we evaluate for patency. Most patients with cloacal extrophy are born with duplicated malarian structures, including a uterus didelphus and a longitudinal vaginal septum. During the reconstruction, the vaginal septum is taken down to create a single vagina. If the vagina is absent or atretic, a vaginal replacement may be indicated. It's very important during the initial closure to work as a team, because not only are we concerned about the outcome from this initial operation and closure, but we're already thinking about the future reconstructions so that the best functional and cosmetic outcome for the child uh, is always paramount in our mind. This enables us to uh, allocate or sh use the tissues appropriately for the bladder augmentation or bladder reconstruction, for the vagina, or to decide what tissues would be best left for the intestinal tract. If at the initial operation, we're not able to close the bladder and we leave it as a bladder extrophy, then at about three months of age, we will plan to close the bladder. And this will enable the kidneys to be drained normally during this important first three months of life. Around three years of age, we will order a contrast enema through the stoma to evaluate for the colonic length. Even when during the newborn period, the colon was very abnormal or short, this tend to grow over time. Then, during a one week period, we're gonna implement what we call our bowel management program. By trial and error, we are going to design an enema that given once a day through the stoma produces a massive bowel movement and the bag will be empty for 24 hours. If we succeed, we can offer the patient a pull through of the stoma. And at the same time, we would perform an anti-grade enema procedure, also known as Malone or Neo Malone. If the patient fails, meaning that we are unable to keep the bag empty for 24 hours, then the piece of colon can be used for bladder or vaginal reconstruction. Unfortunately, the majority of these children do not achieve normal urinary control on their own. And consequently, we have to perform a major reconstruction, which we normally plan to do between four and six years of age. Typically, this involves enlarging the bladder with a bladder augmentation, tightening the urinary sphincter with bladder neck reconstruction or bladder neck closure, 
and providing a conduit through which they can catheterize or mitrophanov. We like to do these reconstructions as a team, especially if the patient needs a vaginal revision during adolescence or early adulthood, as these cases can be very challenging due to atypical anatomy and extensive surgical history. My practice is unique in that I see children, teens, and adults. Meeting the patient early in life gives us the opportunity to develop a strong relationship, which is important in addressing any issues related to puberty, menstruation, sexual function, and future fertility. With a multidisciplinary approach, our goal is to achieve the best possible outcome for each affected area.